when my mental health issue started, I was in like freshman year of high school, but I think some of it started before that with like perfectionism and OCD and just a lot of anxiety from like younger childhood. Um, but I mean, I had a lot of friends. I was really happy all the time, so nobody really questioned it. I, the first semester was fine, but I kind of was always like, I had super high goals for myself and I still do. And it was kind of those ways to help me be in control of stuff. And also, I just wanted my goals so badly that I was kind of willing to do anything. And I saw, you know, a lot of thin runners, a lot of thin athletes. I was like, oh, maybe that's what I need to do to kind of bring my performance up to the next level. And it's a very dangerous path. And I talked with my high school coach and she kind of had said, you know, hey, I see what's happening, like, let's kind of get on top of it. And I kind of took it almost as like, oh, I'm doing it right. Like, I'm dropping time, I'm getting thinner. People are recognizing me in grocery stores and be like, you look like a runner, like, and I just like absolutely loved that attention almost from being like noticed as a runner and feeling like I was helping my team and all my anxiety would like start up as soon as I finished a race and would lead up to the next race just where it was like I had so much pressure on people around me like people at my school including like athletic directors um, just people in my town newspapers and everything because I was like a pretty good runner in Vermont so everybody expected me to do well and I also wanted to do well for my team and so as soon as I would finish competition I was so stressed about that next Saturday and performing well and representing my school well and I didn't I was so scared to like go out there and lose so I wouldn't change how I raced I underfueled because I thought you know hey this is the only way like I'm doing well with underfueling I'm in the top in the state and I underfueled so if I continue this it'll be fine I can keep my spot and continue just going but with that, I was scared to almost lose to anyone. I think one of the reasons I didn't reach out was because I felt like it would be kind of a burden um, and that, you know, I also felt like there were times where I didn't feel like I was ever good enough or I wasn't sick enough. Um, and I just felt like there were people who were kind of struggling with it worse than I was and I didn't feel like I kind of would still get the same support and I was like, oh, you know, that's more serious than what I'm dealing with. But all mental health issues are serious. You're not a burden. You're not weak. You're loved by so many people. One of the reasons I chose Radford was because I knew that I would be training with girls who are like amazing, both like personality and athletically and academically. Um, and so being around a lot of girls that bring up like the morale of the team and everybody's here to like achieve excellence pretty much. I was having a really tough workout the other day um, and a bunch of the girls came over to me and they're like, you know what, you're doing great, you know, you haven't, you haven't been training as long, we've been training for a year, like, you're doing great, this is such an amazing spot for you to be at and my personality has changed 100% since I started recovery last April, so it's been a little over a year. Um, and my personality last summer was, I was sad all the time. Like it was some of the hardest stuff that I've been through and like every single day I still, it's still hard for me. Um, but now my morale has changed so much. Like I got here in the fall and just, I saw what everybody else was achieving and I saw how special this program was. My desire and my total just perseverance and adherence to my eating disorder and restricting was so high and it was way higher than my goals were for athletic achievement and now it's switched i have such higher goals and i'm like you know what restricting got me injured it got me taken away from sport it made me sad it changed my personality and i've really started to look at what recovery has given me and what fueling has given me and one of the biggest things about eating disorders is that when your mind's not fueled, you have body dysmorphia, you're more likely to be anxious. And just like fueling my body more, I can kind of have, the, have more energy and I see that as a positive. 
and see all the things that it took away from me and how much my life has changed now. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I think the biggest resource I probably would have liked to have seen is just people being more upfront and transparent about their mental health issues. I think, especially in high school, when it started, nobody was really talking about it. And it's just like, we need that transparency so people feel okay talking about it. And yes, it's uncomfortable. It's not easy at all. It's mental health. like It's a big part of people's lives and there's such a big stigma in society about it that people just don't feel comfortable talking about it. But I think that's the biggest thing. And I also wish, you know, that we had had some like resource for psycho like psychological help, like a sports psych. And I know that's a little bit harder to do when you're in high school. A lot of high schools don't have those resources. Um, but I just wish that I had had access to that, or at least kind of seen what would happen if I continued under fueling for years to come and hadn't really acknowledged any of my anxiety or stress.